out of all the proteins out there, okay, chicken, fish, beef, turkey, protein powders, milk protein powders, soy, pea, whatever, okay, out of all of those, which one gets in your body and gets utilized the fastest? Well, before we really investigate that, we have to become really clear on one thing. There's a big difference between absorption and utilization, okay? And so much of the utilization of proteins in the body does come down to, well, A, bioindividuality, how good your digestion is, but also what the catalyst is, okay? What is the stimulus for utilizing and needing the protein, okay? Your body's only going to take in and utilize what there's a demand for. So that's a big, big, big variable here that we have to pay attention to. But nevertheless, we can still break it down quite a bit. And so much of this does come down to, again, how quickly your body can digestively break things down and how quickly your liver can do what's called deaminating, okay, where it's taking protein and it's breaking down aminos, right? So it's fairly common knowledge in at least the scientific community that we can't really break down or absorb protein larger than one, two, or three amino acids bound together. We consume protein, they get digested, broken down into amino acids, and when they're single amino acids or chains of two to three, they get absorbed within the body. So that tells us right then and there that a big part of it's just our digestion, our gut bacteria, and things like that. So let's go ahead and let's jump right into this and look at a study that was published in the International Journal of Sports Nutrition and Exercise Metabolism. Okay, this study used specific techniques to figure out roughly how quickly different proteins were absorbed. Again, not necessarily talking about protein synthesis, where the body takes the protein that was absorbed and then actually constructs something with it. So just to give you a rough idea, they found that whey protein absorbs at about eight to 10 grams per hour. They found that pea proteins usually about three to four grams per hour. And then they found like a steak is like 10 grams per hour. So you can already see some complexity there, right? And you can already start poking holes in this because that implies that we can only absorb like 10 grams per hour. Okay, well, we know that we can absorb more protein than that. The point is, is it starts to give us a little bit of a breakdown. And again, this is what it comes back down to how fast our GI system, our gastrointestinal system can actually break things down. So with that kind of out of the equation, let's jump over to how fast a protein digests. Does it really matter when it comes down to protein synthesis? So in other words, the faster the protein absorbing, does it affect how much our protein is actually utilized or is it irrelevant? Does it really even matter at all? So there's a study that was published in the Proceedings for the National Academy of Sciences for the United States of America that took a look at this and they wanted to figure out, okay, a protein that absorbs fast, did it affect protein synthesis more or less? Well, here's what they found. They took a look at casein versus whey protein. Now, Casein protein is notorious for being like the protein you take before you go to bed because it digests slower. So they knew it digested slower. Whey protein is notorious for being like what you consume post-workout because it absorbs quick. So here's what's interesting. They found that when subjects consumed casein protein, it inhibited full body leucine oxidation and protein breakdown by 34% a few hours down the line, whereas whey protein did not. So what this implies is that when you took in a casein protein that digested slower, it did protect the body from breaking down its own body tissues, which is phenomenal, okay? Whey protein did not do that. But then on the contrary, when subjects consumed whey protein, they had a 68% increase in muscle protein synthesis right after they took it, compared to 31% with the casein. Okay, so I guess this comes back to full circle being like, pick your poison or pick your pudding, I guess, right? Which one are you after? Whey protein, in this particular case, absorbs really fast, but left you with your body being at risk of burning up its own tissue once it's digested and done, which is a pretty short window. Casein protein, although I have my issues with casein protein, please don't go out and buy casein protein. For the sake of this study, I'm going to talk about it. Casein protein provided you with less of an actual spike in the beginning, but provided protein synthesis that protected the body from breaking down over the course of the day, right? So here's the thing, protein synthesis isn't just elevated right after a workout or right after you break a fast. Protein synthesis is elevated for usually like 24 hours after a given stimulus. So it kind of doesn't matter in some ways. As long as the protein synthesis is aggregating the total amount that it should over the course of 24 hours, 
then who cares? Who cares if 75% of your protein synthesis is happening right here and 25% is happening the rest of the day, or if it's happening at 25% throughout the whole day? At the end of the day, you're still getting the overall muscle recovery. It's only when you start getting into finely tuned things, like very difficult workouts and intermittent fasting where you're trying to time things right, that it really starts to matter. So we're gonna dive into it a little bit more because I know that some of you are probably interested in hearing that. But before we totally talk about that, here's something interesting in the world of ground meat, okay? I had often wondered if eating ground meat made it so that I was absorbing protein faster. Well, it turns out it's true. So in a particular study, they took 10 men and they gave them minced or ground meat versus uh, a full steak, right? In 135 gram servings, so not huge servings. Well, they found that when they consumed the ground form, the amino acid phenylalanine appeared much faster, whereas if they consumed it in a steak form, it took a lot longer for the amino acids to be present in the bloodstream. However, over the course of time, they found that they ended up having the same degree of muscle protein synthesis throughout the rest of the time, right? So like four, six hours later, protein synthesis stayed the same. So there was no difference in protein synthesis. Like one didn't spike protein synthesis to occur higher than the other, but one appeared faster in the system. So that's kind of interesting right there, right? So basically with minced or ground meat, in my opinion, it's superior because you've already, you still have the same proteins that absorb at a specific rate and they get utilized via protein synthesis at a specific rate, but because they're already mechanically digested and masticated, they're absorbing faster. So ground meat for the win in that particular case. Okay, so let's kind of evaluate the risks and rewards of specific kinds of proteins here so you can figure out where you can use one. And then we'll talk about how much you can absorb in one sitting. Okay, so let's start talking about whey protein. So whey protein, big reward because you get a quick absorption, right? But pretty heavy risk because once that absorption is done and that muscle protein synthesis is done, then it's leaving you totally exposed to muscle protein breakdown within your body. So really, whey protein only comes into the equation if you can have whey protein and then almost immediately have a solid meal after the fact. However, you have other inflammatory systems that come into place with the whey to begin with that might be a deterrent from the whey in the first place. The only time that you might get a benefit out of the whey is when you know that you've had a very, very, very intense workout and your body can actually utilize that whey protein at that very specific point in time. But remember that protein synthesis stays elevated for 24 hours. So you really, although you have a small minuscule spike right after your workout where you're gonna get a little bit more protein synthesis, you really are getting protein synthesis throughout the entire 24 hours after your workout. So is it really worth the added risk to take in the whey protein? And that's a question you have to ask yourself. Okay, breaking a fast is another situation where you might want something that absorbs fast to get into your system. But if you don't have the catalyst, if you don't have a stimulus that is going to ask for muscle protein synthesis, right? You're not, at the end of a fast, you're gonna absorb what you take in, but you don't have a demand for muscle protein synthesis because you're not finishing a workout, right? So whey protein, just to get protein in for the sake of protein in, doesn't make sense right when you break a fast, okay? So now let's dip to the next one. Okay, and my personal favorite, pea protein. Okay, so pea protein absorbs really fast, but not quite as fast as whey protein, gives you more protection for a medium length of time. Okay, so whey protein picks you up, drops you, pea protein picks you up a little less, carries you on a little bit more. It's kind of a happy medium in the world of protein shakes. Okay, works for post-workout. It's usually my go-to for breaking a fast because it's right in that middle ground. Okay, so kind of a balance there. Where do you want to use these specific kinds of protein powders? Uh, soy protein absorbs a little bit faster, but soy protein has a multitude of issues with it. You don't want to do that no matter what. Um, if you guys do want to try pea protein, just FYI, I put a link down below for Sun Warrior. So if you're doing keto, if you're doing intermittent fasting, this is what I break my fast with and what I consume during keto. So people always ask me what I use in the way of protein powders. So check them out down below in the description, special links, special discounts if you guys want to check out Sun Warrior's Warrior Blend, which actually takes pea protein and a little bit of hemp protein to enhance the amino acid profile. So it's really a solid substitute for whey protein if you're just trying to avoid the big spike and crash there. Okay, now let's keep continuing on. Uh, then we have egg protein, which is kind of the perfect medium, right? So egg protein, if cooked all the way, absorbs at about four grams per minute. If it's not cooked all the way, it lessens and it slows down, but it's basically harder to digest. So egg protein is really good just for having a solid system. So if you're breaking a fast, which again, a lot of my fan base is, is fasting related. 
but also post-workout. So let's say you have a shake post-workout 30 minutes later, 40, 50, 60 minutes later even, it'd be a perfect time to have eggs because then you still have something that's absorbing pretty fast, but then it's carrying you over and giving you something a little bit easier, right? So shake and then eggs. Then we move into uh, steak in a beef form. Okay, that's gonna be more sustained, but not a quick spike. Okay, so something that's just gonna satiate you for a while. And then we go into the ground. Okay, ground meats, ground beef, ground chicken, stuff like that. That's good for something that's gonna get you a decent amount of protein absorption, but needs to carry over for a little bit longer too. So a good example of that would also be kind of your second meal after breaking a fast, or a second meal after kind of protein spiking after a workout. And remember, all of this is going to be dictated by how much fat, right? So if you have a protein shake and you have fat along with it, it's gonna slow down the absorption. Everything you need to know with protein, especially with protein shakes, keep them as lean as possible so that you can absorb a lot easier. Okay, and then lastly, we have fish. Okay, fish is in the same ballpark as ground meat, simply because it's easier to masticate, easier to break down, okay? So again, whey, pea, those are gonna be the ones you wanna choose. In that case, opt for the pea when possible, and then go into the minced or the fish. Okay, now how much protein can you absorb at once? Well, let's take a look at a study that was published in the Journal of Physiological Reports. Okay, this took a look at individuals that consumed 20 grams of protein post-workout versus 40 grams of protein post-workout. Now, what they found is that when individuals consumed 40 grams of protein after a full body workout, they absorbed 20% and utilized 20% more protein as far as muscle protein synthesis went uh, than the other group. So, doubled the protein content but only increased muscle protein synthesis by 20%. So they figured that when they took in the 40 grams of protein, the workouts were full body workouts, which may have elicited more of a need for muscle protein synthesis. So did it really matter that they consumed 40 or 20? Or was it more so, once again, the catalyst that is asking and demanding for muscle protein synthesis? The point is, we can absorb as much protein as we take in, really but is it going to get utilized for muscle protein synthesis? We don't know unless we have, once again, a demand. And that demand is gonna be generated by a workout or by proper timing and gaps in between meals. So the short answer is enjoy your protein. Consume it, have it, whether it's protein shake or whatever you wanna do, your body is more than likely going to utilize it. And it takes a lot of energy to convert that excess protein into fat. So don't really worry too much. As long as your calories are within where they need to be, if you have too much protein, it's not gonna damage your kidneys. It's just gonna get converted into glucose and ultimately stored as glycogen in the muscles. So there you have it, a long-winded breakdown, long-winded explanation, but at the end of the day, it all makes sense. Make sure you keep it locked in here on my channel and do check out Sun Warrior down below in the description. See you soon.